Hi, I'm Ryan Gill from Gill's Primitive Archery. I've done a couple other videos for you, but today it's cool enough I can wear my buckskins. And I'm going to sit outside here and do some napping. I typically am a lap napper, as I've said before, where I do everything on my lap like this. Uh, today, I'm going to show you some freehand stuff. I've been experimenting more and more with freehand napping like this it's uh, allowed me to uh, speed up the process a little bit I'm still kind of figuring some things out one thing that I will point out if you do nap like this you're gonna get a couple shards of stone jammed into your finger at some point or another. I got two in there today. One was, was a pretty good one. But your fingers seem to clot up pretty quick and stop to bleeding so it's not the end of the world. But anyway, I'm working with all the antler tools here. Just some tines and a couple billets. I got a, a white tail billet just made. I may uh, try that out a little bit. Got a moose billet here, some little flakers. Um, you know, primitive man didn't have a a nice lawn chair to sit in, or didn't always have the luxury of having a, a rock or a, a log to sit on. Remember, they didn't have saws like we have today, so it's not like they're going to sit on a stump. So I think a lot of their napping was probably done sitting on the ground. I don't sit cross-legged real well. I only got one one cross. The other one's out front. So I guess it doesn't matter how you sit as long as you're comfortable. But I think the majority of the arrowheads were made like this. Freehand napping. Because I don't, and I can still do some work here, but my leg bounces quite a bit. I guess if I lean over on it I can do it, but um, like I said, I'm kind of experimenting with this freehand. What I'm doing here, this is a piece of Texas shirt by the way, it's heat treated. What I'm doing here is I'm basically just getting rid of all the nonsense that I don't need. You know, I don't need to start the, the final process. This is a just a thin flake that I spalled off. And it's what I prefer to start with when working with arrowheads. If it's a matter of time, already having it closer to arrowhead dimensions helps. Alright, well, I've kind of knocked most everything off. Or, you know, I already had like a sharp edge here. You may have seen it. It was actually pretty sharp. Some would say, well, why don't you leave that? It had some curve, it was real thin. It wasn't going to turn out real good using that as, as a cutting edge. but. All right, we knocked a whole bunch of nonsense off. We're kind of thick everywhere again. Uh, again, got a having a braider. I'm just gonna go around and braid everything off. And I guess I still look at myself like I'm cheating using this grinding wheels and a braider. But I don't have any sandstone or limestone in my vicinity right here, so using what I got on hand. I guess as long as my breaking tools are antler, I'm okay with that. Alright, now what you're doing here with the freehand napping is you're holding your index finger underneath the spot that you want to hit. You see, same ice lid platforms, everything applies. But you're almost nicking your finger every time you go by. You know, if you're just clearing material, you don't have to be real close. But when you're trying to get a good flake, whoop, there I busted it. Sorry, that was an ugly piece. I wasn't happy with it anyway. <laughs> uh, you want your finger close to where you're hitting, and that's what's going to catch the flake. And I think it makes it run a little longer when you catch it with your finger, too. I'm not 
for sure on that. Maybe it's just that it takes the shock out of it. But I've actually broken less whole points by freehand napping as opposed to being on my lap. Now I still pressure flake on my lap. I still don't do it like this like some people do or in my hand. I, I don't know why I like to do it that way. I just do. I've tried it the other way. Still not real happy. And I'm still gonna do it to clean up my edges. Isolate some platforms. All right, now if you can kind of see here, I'm going to try and take some of this ridge out. And I still like a, a pretty big billet at this point. Something's got some weight behind it. So I'm going to hold my finger up under it, try and get the angle right. There, I knocked a, quite a bit of it off, you can see. And actually that's part of it that was all the way down all the way down here there's still a few more in there that was a good one and break it loose like I said you're gonna you're gonna hit your finger some my fingers are pretty calloused up anyway. You're going to jam a few shards in there every once in a while. It's just kind of the name of the game when you're napping, I guess. I guess you could always wear gloves. I guess I, I recommend to those that are new to it and their hands aren't real coarse yet or they don't want to get cut. You know, you may want to wear gloves. I can't feel what I'm doing as well when I'm wearing gloves. and I'm not a very good role model anyway. I don't wear any eye protection or anything. Usually, once a day at least, I get a, a significant flake in my eye. I haven't suffered any real damage yet. I always seem to... I can keep myself from blinking, so I get in and look in a mirror and can get it out without doing any damage but I guess in the primitive world where we don't have mirrors I might be in in rough shape so you think I'd learn and wear safety glasses but I don't I'm pretty stubborn gonna do things the way that I want to do them I guess okay so I'm getting it thinned out right now I'm I'm not even really working towards a point shape yet. I'm just going around it trying to knock some material off and get it a little thinner in a couple spots. But I'm liking this freehand napping more and more that I do it. The first few times I did it it was awkward. I would only use it on really big pieces that I was trying to just clear material off fast. and I started to realize I was having a hard time getting the right angles and maintain and doing it like that. See, I'm still old habits die hard. That was a, a good one. <laughs> so I hope at some point I'll be as good freehand as I am on my lap. I think I'm getting there. If I get a real troublesome area, I'll go back and, and get on my lap if I need to, or if it needs to be a real big flake. Well, I'm worried about really jamming some shards in my finger. I'll do it. But I guess it's good to know both. But this proves here that you don't have to be comfortable in a seat and have to have a nice workstation set up. You just set things in your lap and nap them out. This is a good spot for us. big clunky piece I wanted to get off. It was a good one. One thing that I do, I've mentioned it before, is you'll see that I hit a lot. 
instead of lining up and making one hit. Uh, a lot of times I start soft and progressively get harder and harder and harder until I get it to break loose. And sometimes I just don't catch it right the first time. And it's one of those spots where I'm going to try my new one where I can use a small end. I right, got it. Sometimes you just got to get one started, then the rest follow. There we go. Right. I'll bang some of this loose stuff off. One thing that's going to be interesting is when I get down to the final pressure flaking to see how I uh, do on my leg like this. Normally I work on the, the hard part right above my knee. This is a little softer in here. We'll see if I can get as much pressure. Maybe I'll switch legs or put this one out or something. One way or another we're going to figure it out. This is kind of my first time really just sitting on the ground napping. All right. Yeah, that's that's the truth. It is my first time sitting on the ground napping. I like a comfortable chair. Makes it a whole lot easier to nap around a campfire if you don't have a chair. Getting some step fractures in here that I'm not real pleased with it, but I guess we got lots of time to get those out. I'm still really reducing material. Uh, looking like that's probably going to be my point. So I'm just going to get all this stuff out. I'm hoping I can get these step fractures off um, from this side, maybe. some of that material off and I'll see if I can thin it down on this side my angle is not really very good so I'm gonna use the flaker and at least try and get a little bit better of an angle Feet are going to sleep on me a little bit. I, uh, I've done a lot of hunting sitting on the ground and have had to deal with that. My feet going to sleep so much. Haven't figured out a way yet to keep that from happening. Try to pull all the little busted pieces off as it go. This way definitely feels more primitive to me. I'm going to have to do more of this sitting on the ground, making points. I don't need a pad near as much. 
this way. Actually gonna try and there we go. All right, you can see we're we're getting thin. I said I'm making a hunting point here. I'm not trying to make some big fancy display piece. I I like to make stuff that I can use. This one's actually for a customer. It's got an order. I do make a lot of points for other people. And there they are to hunt with. You can find my contact information too uh, in the information information section right below the screen. And subscribe to my other videos too. If you look at my other videos or my website, you can see the bows that I make and I hunt with and kill a couple deer with every year. And arrows that I make, and hunting points, even some show pieces, stone knives, all kinds of stuff. Alright, I'll start trying to clean it up a little bit doing too much talking and not enough napping So I'm just pressure flaking it a little bit thinner along the edges. One thing I like to do, people want to know how I do it and get enough force on my lap. I actually tilt both things back, put it, whoop, put the tilt the stone back in, the flaker back, find the point that I want, and then I twist both, primarily the antler, but I lots of pressure in and then I roll it away until it breaks and then I can see I rock the the point back with my thumb and then I rock it forward too but that gives me the opportunity to change the angle that I'm flaking if I need the flake to run longer or shorter I'll make a note too when you are making these and you get all the little flakes all over your pad, don't go like this with your hand to brush them off because you'll just embed them, especially with obsidian. You always pick your pad up and dump them off. Okay, kind of thick and ugly still, so let's see if we can't knock it thin. Good start. I've learned that for hunting you want them thin, pretty thin, but you don't want to get them so thin that they're no longer strong enough to encounter bone. 
some guys especially with the copper tools can get them so thin I just can't imagine how thin they get them but I I wouldn't even want to shoot shoot a deer with them I'm afraid that even a rib bone would would break them but you don't want them big and clunky either they can have a couple problem areas and you can actually smooth them out if you have a couple step fractures that are causing some resistance like I'll probably still get rid of this stuff here um, but if you have some you can actually put your pitch over it and smooth them out and cheat a little bit and I guess it's still it's really not cheating when you're making them to hunt with anything counts primitive man certainly wouldn't throw away a point because it had a, uh, a step fracture in it okay what I'm gonna do said I got all this junk over here I don't like I'm gonna take material off this side and try and put my center line to that side more you know this edge here is not too bad so we're gonna leave it alone I'm gonna work on this side and bring it over and then get rid of all this step fracture nonsense the reason why I did that is because I'm impatient and wasn't setting up my platforms right to begin with which I guess is okay when you're confident enough that you can come back later and still get them out that would have been a fatal flaw for me when I first started now I'm just I'm crushing material moving the center line over now I'm actually gonna actually take some flakes off and really it, it does it just takes practice to know what your platforms and your your center line looks like and the angles it just eventually you do it so much you just look at it and you know when it's gonna do what you want it to do you're probably not gonna see me busting out a protractor and holding it up and telling you what angles they are I like to keep the primitive in primitive archery as much as possible all right so now we move the center line over to this side like this is how you were looking at it before I guess because this is where the step fractures are now we're going to get rid of them hopefully probably make sure I got that edge I would start back here but I got a step fracture down here in the middle is actually the best part to start it looks like ah, it didn't go as far as I wanted it to but it is a start well, yep that was right on finger that one felt better let's see what we got here yep, went right across center just what we wanted I was trying to leave it on there but it stuck to my finger let's see if I can get one more little one there we go Well, I'm gonna push the envelope. I'll try one more. Nope, I better not. I'm actually gonna try and clean that up now with the flaker. And I did. I like small points for hunting. You can kill them with bigger ones. I just, after shooting several deer, I've had better luck with smaller points. I guess I say that about every opportunity I get. See where people have great big points that weigh anywhere from 125 to 200 grains and more even. And they're killing them. But I consistently get better penetration with the small points. And they're still an inch wide you know seven eighths on the small side maybe occasionally 
if the game laws allow down to three quarters of an inch but for the most part I keep them right around an inch and I don't run around measuring them all either it's it is what it is whatever it comes out to and I say that'll work that's what I shoot definitely getting thinner now for sure I got rid of all that stuff I got a goofy thing going back here it flips up you can see I just haven't worked that yet but that's coming up getting rid of some of it Definitely getting there. kind of just got a lot of inconsistencies in it right now some waves and stuff so I'm just pushing through trying to even some stuff out then I'm gonna go along and see if I can't flake everything off flat I guess you could say I nap by the seat of my pants. I, I don't really formulate any sort of plan or what I'm doing. I just make it up as I go along. If it doesn't look right in the end, I just put it in the box to give to some kids and let them run around and play with them and lose them. And I remember I used to go to rendezvous and archery tournaments and stuff and every napper's got a, uh, a little basket of points that didn't turn out quite right. And they're usually fairly cheap. I used to always buy a few and go home and mount them onto arrows and I never did a very good job but I was a kid never figure it out really but it got me a start if it wasn't for those cheap little points I probably wouldn't be doing what I was doing today and really what got me started so any chance I get to pass some points off to some kids I usually do especially the uh, kids that'll come up at a show and sit next to me or stand next to me for 45 minutes and watch me make an entire point and you're just awestruck as to how I'm doing it. I figure they probably had the attention span for it so I try and send them away with a point or some rock or something to, something to work with. I can say I I got my fair share of free stuff when I was a kid because I was that one that would stand there and watch somebody. I don't know, maybe they were just giving me stuff to make me go away, I don't know. Okay. We're getting down there, still got a couple little issues. I'm going to work on the base here a second. It's like I'm almost fluting it to get rid of it. Now I got an ugly spot I got to deal with. Not the first time.
guess you could say I got an ugly spot to deal with every time I wake up in the morning and look in the mirror. Like they say, uh, women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. My wife used to make fun of me for doing this stuff all the time. Now she doesn't think it's real funny anymore because I pay the bills doing it. She's good and supportive though, really. She likes what I'm doing. Well, I guess I could keep shooting video over and over until I get some that are just some beautiful, perfect points. But then that wouldn't be a reality, would it? Yeah, well, I'm trying to get that one step fracture out. I can live with it if I have to, but I really, I don't want it in there. Not every single point is going to be absolutely perfect. This one so far doesn't look like it's going to be my best point ever, but it'll still be a, a dang good hunting point. As long as it's symmetrical and sharp, that's all that matters. Still one or two step fractures in it. We can we can work around that. I actually like to make them as pretty as I can, not just for looking at them, but usually a pretty point's a very uniform point. I think that translates into a a better cutting point, a cleaner kill. But like I said I ain't not punching them out on a press. When it's all said and done, I'll look it over and if I would personally shoot a deer with it, then I'll I'll send it off to somebody else. If I wouldn't, it goes into the pile for the kids. We're going to thin this base down a little bit more. I like a nice thin base for attaching, and that might actually get me through that, that step fracture when I come back around. Getting there, you can hear it. I'm getting them out. Getting them out far. Moment of truth here. Yeah, didn't want to go through it. Not done yet, though. Haha. -ha. Busted through it. Didn't get rid of all of it, but got rid of most of it. So that ain't the end of the world. I can live with that little thing. I still might be able to get rid of it a little bit of it yet. Even in the notching, I might be able to, if I plan it right. I didn't learn about that little neat trick right there until much later. So now I just got the rest of it off. You know, always working from the edge. If I can reach in there and grab a hold of a step fracture, and then torque it off. I 
quite happy doing that. And I did, I got rid of it. So alright, we got one or two just little fat spots, nothing, nothing bad. I think when we sharpen it out, we're gonna get rid of them, but it's pretty thin overall. I'm content with it. Hold it up, whoop. Even it up just a little bit, see if I can make it a little more symmetrical. If you're gonna go this far in the process to make a point, you might as well make it as best as it can be. And some may argue that a point doesn't have to be symmetrical to be sharp and deadly. But I tell you one thing, it doesn't hurt. And I think that it may actually make a difference because of the how it transfers into energy. If you have a spot that's wider or it's at a more severe angle than another one that's going to have more drag and may cause your arrow to turn as it's penetrating, which will take a lot of energy out of your arrow. That's not necessarily a proven fact. Never done any research on it. It's just me, me thinking doing what they don't pay me to do. Nobody pays me not to think either, I guess, so. All right, we're rough the edges up a little bit. Get rid of all the little stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and notch it. This guy here, he wants a Cahokia style notch. So that's what we're gonna do. Nothing wrong with that. Works good. Doesn't need to be too fancy. Like I said, if I make them too fancy, that was actually, if you heard that, was a buzzer that just flew overhead had a plastic bag in its claw. I don't know if it was stuck or if it was holding on to it. It might have had some goodies in it. Maybe that's why he was carrying it. It was an odd sound. But anyway, if you make these things too pretty, then people don't want to shoot them. Which is funny to me, because I've made so many now that I, I prefer to shoot them with the prettiest ones I can. I don't really know why other than if I don't shoot a, shoot a deer with it, I'm just going to look at it. So I'd rather look at it all bloody in a display case afterwards. That's good enough. I'm not going to keep pushing it until... Alright, there's the point as it stands now pretty thin. It's not too bad. Doll is all get out right now though. Said I abraded the edges all up. It's a little bit thick in the middle, but it's not not enough that I'm gonna worry about it. I'd shoot it at the deer. Now I'm gonna put an edge on it. It's actually gonna thin it down a little bit more anyway. I like a good serrated edge. I want the tips as sharp as they can be. Ooh, man, that is sharp. I just cut myself. May not be the may not be the prettiest serrations ever, but if they're sharp, yeah, I did cut myself just a little bit there. I'm not really bleeding yet. Might not have been deep enough. But if you can rub it on the back of your hand real gently like that. And if it cuts you, it's going to cut that deer.
And I like to flip them over back and forth. Make sure I have another flake out. And take it, test it a little bit. Not every single one is going to be extremely sharp. But I would say if you get every other one to be really sharp, or if you have a couple in a row and you miss one, it's not the end of the world. But ideally you want to try and get them as sharp. Every one of them as sharp as you can. What I'm talking about is the individual serrations too. Because you probably can't really see too much of what I'm doing. You can see how that's got a serrated edge. This the first one right off the notch is the one that cut my hand. So pretty sharp. Still needs a little bit of attention there. Nice sharp antler flaker sure helps out. But you're gonna okay now nah, that's scary sharp there. Got the whole edge up and down really sharp. It nicked me all up. Even grabbing it with the pad of my finger I could feel it cutting. That's what you want. Some people make some points for hunting and they say, well, stone's sharper than it feels. It'll cut you when it's going fast, which, yeah, if it's going fast, I mean, I guess maybe it'll cut you, but I sure want it as sharp as I can absolutely possibly get it. If it's not sharp enough, I'm going to keep sharpening. And when I shoot it into something, to test it, I want to shoot it into something really soft so it doesn't mess up the edge. They hold an edge better than a steel point does, but when you shoot them into the ground, they will still doll up. You know, traditionally, you know, the, the primitive way how I do it to my own is I don't put a final sharpened edge on my points until I'm ready to walk out the door and go hunt. So, not meaning that every day before I go hunt that I'm going to go sharpen my points, but what I'm saying is I don't make one as sharp as I possibly can in my lap like this and then go put it on my arrow and go out and shoot it. Instead, I knock a few serrations in it to get, make sure I get it the shape that I want it and then I mount it up and go shoot it and if it flies good no problems then I come back and I just touch up in between the serrations a little and make sure I get them really sharp then I don't shoot them again until it's at a, a deer or a hog or whatever. One thing that I miss about shooting metal points is the ability to be hunting and see a squirrel and not want to pass up the opportunity to shoot at it if I should want to because with a steel point and just take it home bust out the file and resharpen it. Not saying that you can't resharpen one of these stone points, but it's a little bit more of a process and every time you resharpen it, it gets a little thinner. A little smaller, a little bit more blunted, so I have a hard time donating a, a nice sharp stone point at a squirrel when I'm deer hunting.
Although I've done it. Guilty of it. If I look and it looks like it's a real soft spot of mud that it's over, sand or something where I think, well, it won't be that big of a deal to, to resharpen it. I'll take the shot. It's not like you're going to hit that squirrel and your arrow magically stop and after it hits it either. It's going to go through it, so you got to consider what's behind it. And of course, listen to me talking like I'm a hero, like I hit every squirrel I shoot at. Nope, the reality is I usually run it into a log or run it into a uh, stump or a rock or something to mess my point up. I don't hit nearly as many squirrels as I shoot at, but I don't shoot at too many anymore. So there you go. That's about seven eighths or an inch wide. I'll measure it just to be sure, but it's definitely at least seven eighths, which is legal in most states. That's what I call one of my flake points, typically. Usually pretty small. Uh, this one's probably 60 grains or so. The uh, notches aren't real deep. Point's really sharp. The serrations are very sharp. It's not the thinnest point that I've made. It's not bad, but it's certainly not the thinnest one that I've ever made. But like I said, you don't want them so thin either that they break as soon as you hit something. So, all right. There you have it. Check out my web page if you're looking for any of these. This is kind of my average point that that I use to hunt with. I wouldn't think twice about hunting with that one. It's scary sharp. All right. Well, thanks for watching.